Hello everyone, and welcome to Biopedia. This week, I thought I'd introduce apoptosis, also known as programmed cell death. Now, I'm not going to discuss the various arms of the molecular pathway itself, as this is really more of a separate episode topic. Instead, this is just meant to be an introduction to set up any molecular discussion, or indeed further discussion more generally, of apoptosis that we have later on. So, apoptosis then, or programmed cell death. The easiest way to talk about why it is useful is by contrasting it with its evil twin necrosis, which is an uncontrolled form of cell death. Necrosis involves a cell simply rupturing and scattering its contents into the extracellular environment, which, as you can imagine, may have dire consequences for any cells caught in the firing line. By contrast, apoptosis involves cells dying in an orderly fashion, and eventually disintegrating into smaller vesicles containing all the material of the former cell. These vesicles are known as apoptotic bodies, and this process of a cell splitting off into apoptotic bodies is known as blebbing, which as a little aside has to be one of the more fun words in biology. Feel free to drop me a line if you disagree though. Anyway, the upside of this process for the cell is that macrophages are easily able to digest the cellular contents like this, this happens because of a particular signal that these apoptotic bodies send out, but I'll leave a discussion of exactly why this happens for when and if we discuss blebbing in more detail. In essence, then, apoptosis means that any cell death which occurs happens in an orderly and controlled fashion so that other cells are not impacted. Why is this useful to an organism? Well, to answer that, you only need to look at your hands and feet. When an embryo is developing, there are still cells between what will one day become the digits, meaning that the embryo's hands and feet are more like paddles at this stage. Apoptosis is what the body uses to unstick the digits, if you like, so that functioning hands and feet can develop. Another example would be the tails of tadpoles. When tadpoles develop into frogs, after all, you need to get rid of the tail somehow. On a more medically relevant note, Apoptosis ensures that cells which have a fault that cannot be repaired commit suicide. Cancer may be a consequence of the molecular pathways of apoptosis not functioning correctly, and thus allowing mutant cells to survive. Apoptosis usually occurs at a very high rate within the human body, as cell creation by mitosis and cell death need to be balanced out in order for an organism to function properly. As an example within the body, most neutrophils your body produces in the bone marrow also die there, without ever seeing action or being released into the bloodstream. This might seem counterproductive, but is actually a way of ensuring that there is a constant stream of short-lived neutrophils which can fight infection. Cells are, after all, cheap from a biological point of view compared to the larger organism. In this sense, it's better to have a continual stream of neutrophils that are not used in most cases, rather than the body being unable to produce them when they're actually required. So, that's a very brief introduction to the concept of apoptosis. As I said, I'm going to hold off talking about things like the molecular pathways, or how blebbing specifically works, for another time, as that's probably too big a topic to cover in one go, and it's likely better to come back to it at a later date. In the meantime, thank you for listening. For any comments, questions, or topic suggestions, you can contact the show at biopediapodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, have a great week.